Okay, uh, I'm going to go through some of the questions here. Year 11 in exercise 205. Someone's asked about a few of these. Um, I might do a couple of question five as well because uh, the person who asked asked for question seven and eight, but I know that some of you might have still had some trouble with question five. So I'm going to quickly do a couple of these. So a lot of this is knowing about your index laws and your index notation. And we'll quickly just revise those. You need to know them off by heart. So things like a to the power of m times a to the power of n, you can, they're the same base, add the powers, n plus n. a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n, we can subtract the powers, a to the power of m minus n. Our power of a power, a to the power of m to the n, is a to the power of m times n, a to the power of Negative n just means it goes underneath, it's one on top, and one over a to the n. And a to the one on n is the nth root of a. And then our one that has a lot, a to the power of m on n negative is one over the nth root. A to the power of m. Now, if you understand all that and you can work with those indices, you're going to be okay. So, if we have a look at question five. Now, remember to do these, we're going to write them in the same base and then equate the powers. So, if I'm looking at 5a, uh, i use this 5a. Oh no, it's a bit too light. I'm going to go back here. 5a. And we've got four m equals root 2. Well, I know 4 is 2 squared, so I can write 4 like that. And I know that root 2 is 2 to the power of a half because there's a hidden 2 in there because we know it's a square root, which means 2 to the power of 2m equals 2 to the power of a half. And once we've got that, we can equate the, the powers, the indexes. So 2m equals a half, divided by that, m equals a quarter. Um, let's look at 5c. And we've got 1 on root 2 equals 4 to the power of 2x minus 5. Now, 1 on root 2, well, that's just 2. 1 over the top is negative, and root is a half. And I'm going to write 4 as 2 squared. And then I've got a power of a power here. Got to be careful though when I expand that. So 2 to the negative a half. I'm going to get 2 to the power. And here I'm going to get 2 times that and 2 times that. So don't forget it. And I get 2 to the power of 4x minus 10. Now I have them in the same base. So I equate the powers. Negative a half equals 4x minus 10, I add the 10, 10 and a half, sorry, 9 and a half, so 9 and a half, because I've added 10 over, equals 4x, and uh, then I divide by that, if I knew that, that would be, what, 2 9s are 18, 19 over 2, divide by the 4 would be 19 over 8, which is x, which is... Uh, Two and three eighths. Two and three eighths. Is that right? I'm just looking. At, yeah, that's right. So two and three eighths. Now you would have done that on your calculator anyway, and you would have gone. And you need to know this: nine and a half. And you just go. Oh, divided by four. And you get that. And then you hit your SD button. 2.35, hit shift in your SD button, you get 2 and 3 eighths. Okay, so all of those are going to be similar. They're going to be harder versions. Um, I will do H because it has a fair bit in it, but you need to work on the other ones, especially if you're away. So H, H is... Uh, 9 to the 2b plus 5 equals 3 to the b root 3. Now I'm going to write all this in powers of 3. So that 9 becomes 
3 squared and I've got my 2b plus 5. And here I've got my 3 to the b and that's multiplied by root 3 which is 3 to the half. Okay, so I'm going to expand this bit here. I'm going to get 2 times that and 2 times that. I'm going to get 3 to the 4b plus 10 equals. Now here I can use my first law. I can add the powers. So 3 to the b plus a half because we've got the same base. Now we've got uh, two bases raised to a power equal to each other. So the powers, we can equate them and we get 4b plus 10 equals b plus a half. We subtract a b from both sides, so we get 3b plus 10 equals a half. We minus the 10, 3b equals negative 9 and a half, which remember is uh, 2 nines are 18, 19 on 2, divide by that, and we'll get, divide by the 3 means we'll get uh, negative 19 on 6, and 6 goes into that 3 times with 2 left over, so negative 3 and 2, 6, or negative 3 and a third. Is that right? Negative 3 and a third. Yeah, uh, a sixth. Oh, yes, it only goes into it once. Come on, mate. Got to be better than that. Negative 3 and a six, because there's only one left over, not two left over. Now, uh, the questions I got were question seven and eight. So this is going to require a calculator because we're not asking for exact value, they're asking for two decimal places. Remember when we do an even root, there are two possible answers because we can get a positive or negative number. And when we do an odd root, we only get the one answer. So let's have a look. Uh, I'll start with the first one. So 7a, which is the square root of uh, p squared equals 45. This is pretty easy. p squared equals 45. I just square root both sides. I get p. But remember, it's an even number, so I'll have plus or minus root 45. And they want it as a decimal, so I'm going to hit my calculator up. Your calculator will only give you one answer. It'll only give you the positive answer. You've just got to remember that there are two answers, and we're going to two decimal places. So it equals 6.708. So plus or minus 6.708, and there were a whole lot of decimals after that, but because I'm only going to 2, plus or minus 6.71. And that's the first one. All right. Now, B is going to be pretty easy. N, the fifth root. I'm going to do that because I'm not sure if you know how to use your calculator for that. I hope you do. Um, what is it? N to the 5 equals 240 n to the 5 equals 240. So it's an odd root, so we're only going to get one answer. We're going to take the fifth root, the fifth root of 240. Now, how do I do that on my calculator? Well, you have this button, not your square root button, but your shift and the square root button. So you go shift that. Oops, no, that's a cube root, sorry. It's the x power, so I'll clear that. Shift and this button here. And you get your two spots, and you're going to put a 5 in there, and then you're going to go inside, and you're going to go 240. And you just press equals. 2.992. Now, oh, this is interesting. So, 2.992. So, n equals 2.992. Oh, no, it's not that interesting because go to two decimal places, 2.99. Okay. Uh, let's do one that has a little bit more oomph in it. So, uh, I don't know, I'll do H and I. You should be good with the others, you just did, there are bits on them. So, H and I. So, I do H up here. And H is x cubed minus 1 all over 5 equals 2. x cubed minus 1 all over 5, was it? 5 equals 2. I'll just scoot back and have a look. Yep, right there. And this is like solving any equation. You've just got to get the x by itself. So I'm going to multiply that 5 across. 
and I get x cubed minus 1 equals 10. I'm going to add the 1, x cubed equals 11, and then I'm just going to cube root it. So x equals the cubed root of 11. I'm going to just go to my calculator. Now I do have a cube root button, and I hit it before, it's that one. Cube root, 11, 2.223. So x equals 2.223, but we're going to two decimal places, so 2.22. And that's correct. And i. And i is 2y squared minus 9 equals 20. 2y squared minus 9 equals 20. All right, so I'm going to get, I'm going to isolate the y, so I'm going to get the y by itself. So I'm going to add the 9 to the other side, or add 9 to both sides. It depends, it doesn't matter how you think of it. That gives me 29. I'm going to divide by the 2, so y squared equals 29 on 2. Now I know that you can write that as a fraction 14 and a half, but I'd rather 29 on 2 because when I enter it in my calculator, I'm just going to enter it as a division. You can do that. So y equals, now it's an even one, so there's going to be plus or minus square root of 29 on 2. Now when you go to your calculator, you've got to remember that division and a fraction are the same thing. So I'm just going to go square root, I'm going to put a bracket here, and it's going to go 29 divided by 2, because I didn't want to have to hit, I didn't want to have to hit the um, fraction button. It's just easier to type all along in a line. 3.807. So plus or minus 3.807, and we're going to two decimal places, so 3.81. Okay, you should be able to have a go at the other ones. Let's, so they're just solving equations. Let's have a look at question 8. Now, I'm going to start 8a. I did do this in class, but we'll have a go at it. 8a, I've got x to the minus 1 equals 5. Now I'm going to do this two ways. First of all, I'm going to rewrite. Rewrite. I think I could do the negative, I don't know, the negative root. Um, I'm going to write this as a fraction, so it's 1 on x, because that's what x to the negative means. Now here you've got two options. Most people will do this. They'll multiply by x, both sides, which means they get 1 equals 5x. So you multiply the x across, and then you divide by 5. So you get a fifth equals x. But a lot of people don't go, oh, I can take the reciprocal of this. And you've got to remember that there's, that's 5 on 1. So if I take the reciprocal, it means I just turn both sides upside down. So taking the reciprocal gives me x on 1 equals 1 on 5. And we know that x on 1 is just x, so x equals a fifth. It's a valid way of doing it. Um, most people, however, will do this. Multiply the 5 across and divide by the... Uh, multiply the x over and divide by the 5. Some people call it cross-multiplying. You know. um, so, most of those will be relatively easy. Remember, I'm going to do D when you... because So, for A, B and C, you've got odd roots when you get them there eventually. But, but for D... You've got an even root, so that's going to be two answers. So I'll do B, which is x to the minus 2 plus 1. So I've got x to the minus 2 plus 1 equals 5. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to get rid of that um, 1. So I'm going to have x to the minus 2, and I'm going to subtract 1, I'm going to get 4. I'm just going to shut a door. Okay, so I've added that, subtracted that one. Now I do my index law. x to the minus 2 is 1 over x squared equals 4. Now I'm not going to take the reciprocal. I know I can. I'm not going to take the reciprocal. I'm just going to multiply the x squared over. So I get 1 equals 4x squared. I'm going to divide by the 4, which means I get a quarter equals x squared. And then I'm going to square root both sides. Now I'm lucky because... The square root of 1 over 4, I know I'm going to get two answers, plus or minus 4, 
And I'm just going to square root the top. Square root of 1 is 1, and the square root of 4 is 2. So plus or minus a half. What one was that? If that's 8D, I've got it wrong. What have I done? Well, I've written the question wrong for a start. It's 50. It's 50. So that would have been 50, which means that would have been, yeah, damn this. I'll just quickly fix it up. Everything about my working was right, except it would have been 49 in there, and it would have been 49 in there, and it would have been 49 there, and it would have been 49 there. And then when I square root 49, I don't get 4, I get 7 which is the answer. So sorry about that, I wrote, I wrote the question down incorrectly. Didn't affect it that much though. Now, uh, I'll do two more and then you have a go at them. So I'll do another even one because I'm gonna get a square root. Oh, gee, so easy though. I'll do I and J. I'll do I and J. I'm gonna get plus or minus answers because they're evens. And let's see if you can get the rest. You should go and have a go at them by yourself first. Though. X to the minus 2 equals 2 and a quarter. So here's I. X to the minus 2 equals 2 and a quarter. The first thing I like to do is I like to write it as an improper fraction. 4, 2, 0, 8 plus 1 is 9. So I've got 9 on 4. And I'm liking that already because I know that they're both square numbers. So that's 1 over X squared equals 9 on four. Now I could take the reciprocals now. It'd be so easy to take the reciprocals, but I'm going to go the way that most people would do it. I'm going to multiply that x squared across. So I'm going to get nine x squared on four or nine fourths x squared. I'm going to multiply the four back the other side. So I'm going to get a four and I'm going to divide by the nine and I'm going to get x squared. Now look at what I what I could have done here. It would have been so much easier. Take the reciprocal, I'll get x squared on one equals four on nine which I'll put down here. Now when I square root, I get two answers. So I get plus or minus the square root of four on nine, which is pretty easy because the square root of four is two, so plus or minus, I get a two on top, square root of three is, uh, nine is three. So that's pretty easy. Let's look at the last one. You should go and have a go at it. If you haven't done it, try it now, and then come back to this. So J. B to the negative 4 equals 16 on 81. Okay. B to the negative 4 equals 16 on 81. So that's 1 over B to the 4 equals 16 on 81. I am this time just going to take the reciprocal. B to the 4, I don't need to write the 1, is 81 on 16. Now I'm lucky because I know my fourth roots. So if I take the fourth root, I'm going to get plus or minus, it's an even, the fourth root of 81 on 16. Now I know that the fourth root of 81 is 3 and the fourth root of 16 is 2. Now Margaret writes it as plus, one, plus or minus one and a half, which is what it is. I prefer to keep it as an improper fraction. Now if you couldn't do the fourth root in your head, it's okay because you just use this little baby. And you can do it all as one fraction. So you go shift that, you go four, and you go in here, and you write 81. Oh, stop. Put a parenthesis first. 81 divided by, well you don't need to as long as the um, third line follows it. 16, close the bracket, equals, gives you 1.5, 3 on 2, same answer as I got. Or you can get it as a mixed numeral just by going um, shift SD, which is what Margaret got. So that's a couple of the questions from exercise 205, questions 7 and 8. Good luck and come and see me if you need some help.